Mr. Governor, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anya Anapchuk, Governor Stephen Earl Lewis of the Gila River Indian Community. It's an uh, honor uh, to welcome you to our Atham Juvet, our traditional lands of the Atham peoples. And uh, Chairperson Fudge, Ranking Member Davis, and members of the subcommittee, thank you sincerely for the opportunity to testify on this important topic regarding voting rights and elections administration in Arizona. The Indian Citizenship Act made tribal members full United States citizens in 1924. But as we know, unfortunately, tribal members across Indian country are still fighting to secure and exercise their right to vote. Across the country, tribal members living on Indian reservations face unique voting challenges that individuals living elsewhere take for granted. And this is no different in Arizona. The Gila River Indian community strives to address and tear down the barriers faced by the community's tribal members and is actively involved in initiatives to increase voter turnout across our great reservation. The community is comprised of the Akimar, Atham, and the Peeposh tribes and has over 23,000 enrolled members with approximately 12,000 of those members residing on the reservation. Our reservation is roughly 372,000 acres and located in south central Arizona and both Maricopa and Pinal counties. The reservation is divided into seven political districts with five of those districts located in Pinal County and two located in Maricopa County. Uh, a little bit about our history. In 1928, the community's tribal members, uh, Peter Porter and Rudolph Johnson, were denied the right to register to vote in Pinal County for two reasons. First, because the county did not believe that they resided within the state of Arizona since they lived on our reservation. Second, because the county believed that as American Indians, Porter and Johnson remain wards of the federal government, and that both they and the rest of American Indians in Arizona were not entitled to vote in Arizona elections for state and federal officers. Porter and Johnson litigated Pinal County's decision in the, in the Arizona Supreme Court and lost, unfortunately. The court agreed with the county that Porter and Johnson were, quote, under guardianship, unquote, of the federal government, and therefore not entitled to vote. Tribal members living on reservations in Arizona were unable to vote until 1948, when the Arizona Supreme Court overturned its previous decision and recognized tribal members' rights to vote in Arizona elections. In 1948, only two states continued to disenfranchise voters, New Mexico and Arizona. Tribal members' rights to vote in Arizona may now be fully recognized under the law, but tribal members continue to face barriers to voting. Within Indian country, tribal members are often turned away at the polls because of voter address issues, which combine with ineffective election administrators at unreliable precinct locations foster voter and tribal member distrust and disenfranchise in the voting process. There are important address issues as well. Under current Arizona law, all persons voting in person on election day must provide identification. That includes an address in order to receive a regular ballot. If the identification does not include the individual's photo, then the individual is burdened with providing additional documentation. In contrast, individuals who cast provisional ballots or vote early by mail or in person do not have to provide identifi identification in order to receive their ballots. Our community members generally prefer to vote in person on election day because voting by mail is difficult due to unreliable mail service on the reservation and issues related to their non-traditional addresses. The community's tribal identification cards do not include addresses. Also, individuals living on the Pinal County portion of the reservation do not have standard county street addresses, though through no fault of their own. Many tribal members do not even receive mail at their homes and pay for a United States post office, post office box, which are only open during the week and for limited hours on Saturdays. In 2012, voter identification laws were strictly enforced on the Pinal County portion of the reservation, and many community voters were turned away from the polls when their addresses did not match the voter rolls. Uh, in very few instances, voters were offered and allowed to cast provisional ballots despite not having an address on their tribal identification document. The majority of these voters were denied ballots altogether. 
In Mar Maricopa County, voters were turned away when the county ended up changing their voting precincts without effectively communicating these changes to voters. Despite improvements, many tribal members were again turned away at the polls in the 2016 election. Voter identification laws in Arizona and non-traditional tribal addresses problems remain still a huge barrier for our community's voters. And unless remedied, the community expects that these problems will continue in the next election. Uh, what we, we've been trying to uh, remedy this in, 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 in certain ways. The community is working at a grassroots level to encourage and inform community members to participate in elections in partnership with Get Out the Vote. Our communications and public affairs office recently worked with GOTV and the National Congress of American Indians to produce video content to increase voter turnout among our community. These videos discuss the historic struggle to vote within Arizona and the need to increase the number of American Indian voters. This past August, we hosted the Arizona Native Right to Vote Day celebration. Voting registration has increased since the 2016 election, but the community remains committed to further increasing registration numbers by the community's estimates. Only 58% of the voting age population is currently registered to vote and more must be done. Voting should not be hard to do. The community strives to carry on the legacy of Peter Porter, Rudolph Johnson, and so many other tribal advocates who fought to secure the rights that American Indians in Arizona have today, including our veterans. Ira Hayes, one of the flag raisers in Iwo Jima, uh, comes proudly. He's a native son of the Gila River Indian community, and so we know that our native veterans who have served in the highest uh, levels across the United States, they fought for and they sacrificed for our right to vote as well. Um, so with that, thank you for this opportunity to uh, tell the Gila River Indian community's story on voting history and what we need to change in the future. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you both.